Okay, this is a little video to show the replacement of a balance knife lock shoe. I got some replacements for my window. Here's a broken one. I have a lot of windows where these have broke. Sometimes they keep working even after they're cracked. And I have replaced some with units that I scavenged off of an older window. But I did find a source for these, Swissco, and I ordered 10 of them. And um, they do seem to be a very, very close match. Um, so here's a little explanation of how I'm going to replace this. First, you do have to remove this vinyl jam liner. Second, you have to relieve the tension of um, the cord. This is the so-called um, lock and pulley balance system where the spring is holding the weight of the sash. A pair of vice grips works well. I did this once with a, I just wrapped it around a pencil, but this also works fine. If you can do a hitch, clove hitch on a pencil, that should also lock it up. Then once you do that, it may be possible to untie the knot. The knot is tightened over a long time, so it may not be easy to undo it. But I was able to undo it with a pick in combination with a pair of pliers. One of them to hold the knot tighter than I can with my fingers, and the other one is to put the pick right in the spot where you would loosen it. Just what you would do with your fingers, only you find that with this small cord, you can't really grip it tight enough with your fingers. At least I couldn't. Now I'm just going to reassemble this, and I'll probably use pause just to show the reassembly, and that will help demonstrate the disassembly, because it is in the reverse order. Okay, here I have threaded the cord through the shoe. And um, it, it won't go through by itself because it's not stiff enough. So I just used this needle to help poke it through and you can improvise to do to get that through. Now I'll tie the knot in it. Okay, there's the knot. It's just the original overhand knot. I simply retied it. On another case, I have had to cut it to get it off, and then I had to um, cauterize the end with a little flame so that it wasn't fraying. That helps you to poke it through and then retie it. But anyway, this I was able to use the original because I improved my technique with the pick, I guess. Okay. Now I'm going to slide it back into the channel. Okay, I've slid it into the channel using the same orientation as the original. That's not hard to do because you can check the other side. Okay, they both go in exactly the same way, so do them one at a time if you're replacing both. Okay, next I have to feed the ribbed channel into the jam liner. Okay, I managed to do that while, while keeping the vice grips on the thing. Now, I'm going to slide it all the way in, and there's a little hook on the end that I'm going to have to be careful. Okay, here I've turned the jam liner on the side, so you can see this little S hook. That has to grip as I slide it on onto that, and you can see the other side, the way the S hook is there. Okay, the jam liner is set. Now, I can turn it over. I can, I will be able to slide this and I can put that in place in the locked position and then I can re remove the uh, vice grip. Okay, the vice grip is supporting itself. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold this because when this is rotated this way, it, lock, it will put those teeth so they will lock. If you And I don't want to simply release the vice grip and release the tension all at once because if this isn't locked and it snaps all the way up, it might crack. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll either I'll, I have to find some way to hold this. So I'm going to try to do is hold this with one hand and release the vice grip with the other. Okay. I'm going to hit pause for that. Okay, that was successful. Uh, I did keep that at 90 degrees. Unfortunately, it's pretty easy to release tension on a vice grip with one hand because you just have to open it up like that. Now the jam liner is ready to go back into the window. Okay, this was actually part three of a minor windowsill restoration. And here, now I'm ready to put the jam liner back. You can see this is where I had to patch it. it this was all rotted out on the original, okay? This job was not perfect by any means, and I didn't get the um, fill material level. But one thing I did do is I was able to reconstruct this particular feature, this ridge, but I didn't do as well on some of the other parts. Now I'm going to, um, basically this jam liner will basically snap into place. The, uh, these little hooks are gonna snap in on these spots, and I'll just snap it in now. Okay, the jam liner is in place, and there is a piece at the um, top here that goes in after the jam liner goes in. There's a sealing strip that helps hold that in place. Now, you can see here, I also have caulked underneath the casing, the window casing. I did leave an eighth of an inch gap. I'm still yet going to caulk under this um, part of the window hardware right there. It's just a small piece. Uh, it's all painted, multiple coats of paint, two coats of primer, and one coat of top, into that gap. So the idea is to make it as waterproof as possible. Now this little strip here, I, I didn't, I didn't cut that off actually, but that's, it never did meet that spot. It didn't go down all the way, but I'm going to try to fill that gap just to keep the water from, you know, getting into there. Okay, I, I just filled that gap there with some caulk on the two sides. That's what I've lately been doing, is putting in more caulk into all sorts of little cracks. Because I, I don't want these window sills to rot anymore. Now, I will notice that on these windows, um, they have suffered some paint on the vinyl. And rather than try cleaning that off, which I, I have tried in the past, um, I also find that it's, it's quite acceptable to simply take some white paint and paint those because th those are not spots where there's any friction that needs to get on it. Um, for example, here there's a brown discoloration that happened when this was stained. Exactly where this red, I think this actually came from the pro color of the primer because I noticed this when I sanded the window sill, I, I got that same red coat. These windows, I believe, were Caradco, I think, back in 1984, and I'm not sure exactly how they came, but I, it seems as though when they were painting them that they got some of the paint in the tracks. And I think just painting that over on white, I've done that on a pre, another window, and it can make it look really nice. This stuff here, I'm not sure that this actually serves any function. And it, it does get, it's like a little styrofoam. And it gets dirty, you can't really clean it, so... I might just um, completely remove that, for example, once I've convinced myself that it doesn't really serve any sort of a function. I, I could have cleaned these uh, vinyl jam liners a little bit better. Because they, they were kind of dirty. <laughs> Although, the vinyl that's exposed could also... Any vinyl that's exposed that's not part of the friction can actually be painted, okay? So it can make the window look a little bit nicer. Okay, so I think that's gonna be, I still have to install the triple track, the remaining components, uh, the two um, sashes go in, but that's all really standard. They're designed to go in and out, so I'm really not gonna put that on this particular tape. That'll be the end of this, okay? Thanks, bye.